Hey there, YouTube land. Big Dave here. Hope everybody's doing great. And uh, I thought I would take a few minutes today and uh, talk to you about playing some blues lines. And, uh, you know, uh, like half-tonguing, growling, and um, false fingers. So what I'm going to do is um, I decided right, right before your very eyes, um, I'm going to take my horn out. Now this horn's been laying for uh, since Friday. I had it with me, but I haven't used it since then. So I'm going to uh, take out my trusty neck strap. And uh, a lot of times I use this neck strap, which is a, it's a Roberto's Winds. Uh, this black one also. And I, I like this strap because it has this um, extra leather cushion in the back, you know. But um, the thing I don't like about this strap is sometimes it tends to creep down. So that's why I, I kind of like that other one that I've been using with the buckle on it. Um, but this is the one that I carry in my case. So take my neck out, which is in the bag. And this already has cork grease on it. So I don't leave a lot of cork grease um, on the uh, cork. But... Um, you know, this is a Mark 7, this horn. This is the one I usually carry around with me. And um, with the blue tape, you know that one? <laughs> so here it is. And then uh, I just check to see if my C-sharp is opening, right? You know, I push the C-sharp. And in this case, it's opening because sometimes it sticks. Um, and then the G-sharp. I check to see if the G-sharp is working, which it is. And then I usually just try the keys out, and I usually roll my fingers against this, see if those are working. Make sure these are opening and they don't sound too sticky. If they sound really sticky, I might put um, a little bit of uh, powder. I have a small container of powder, and uh, that's it. So uh, then I'll put my neck on. This is kind of too tight. And um, you know if your neck is too loose, uh, it'll cut down on your sound, on your horn. It makes it inefficient. So uh, you get your repair person to check it out. If uh, It might need to be adjusted. Um, so, and I make that kind of snug. I mean, you don't want to be too, too tight like you're going to need pliers. Some people tighten everything too much. But this needs to be snug. But if the neck fits right, then it's not going to be a problem. So uh, here's my uh, mouthpiece. And on this horn, I usually use this um, T9 Van Doren medium chamber. I'm playing a two strong regatti. It's the two and, a, no, two and a half strong regatti gold. Sometimes I use, uh, a lot of times I use Van Doren two and a half purple box. Um, sometimes ZZ Jazz three. Ricos, I don't use them too much right now because um, I don't really care for the new ones too much. Um, you know, it's very debatable, but I, I, I've been kind of not so thrilled with them. Now, all I did is put my mouthpiece on. This is completely dry. I didn't wet this or anything. All right? Um, I might wet it, but first, I just put it together, put my reed on. Like I said, I didn't... Um, you know, wet this, and I'll just start with open C sharp. Here it is, okay? And then I'm going to just play some notes down to the bottom. And to down to my B. B flat. Okay, so 
so it's dry and it'll wet up by itself. I don't need to wet it. All right. So anyway, let's talk about some blue stuff. Uh, I'm going to start off with a little line here. It's going to be D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. So I'm going chromatically up to the G. But I'm going to start the first note not with my tongue. I'm going to play from open C sharp into the D. And that's going to be my articulation. <laughs> And I went up to a B flat, but I used a false B flat. I put this down and put my fingers down here. So I didn't really go to the regular B flat. I'm not using any side keys. I'm just using front keys. I want to give myself some venting or uh, close off the notes so I have a different sound. Um, I'll give the note a different timbre. I'm going to do it again. Now, I'm not starting with my tongue. Um, uh, the first articulation and, and I'm also doing some growling so the way you growl um, is you hum at the same time you make a note so if I do C sharp and then I hum and my pitch uh, I'm using that pitch right now I'm using this pitch it's like an app. That's the pitch I'm using. Just hang on one second here. Yeah, we were having some bad thunderstorms, so I had the weather radio and stuff on. Uh, we, there was like power problems and things, so I was checking it out. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to just play those chromatic notes again that I just played. Da -da 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 -da, right? <laughs> Now, I'm going to the B flat. And the whole thing here is, you don't want to make it too pretty. And, you know, you're doing this blues thing. It's uh, a traditional kind of uh, like blues. So the B flat is the minor third in the key of, I'm playing right now for me in G blues. Um, I'm leading up to it with the D, which is the fifth, you know, and I'm going up, right? But I'm using that open C sharp with the growl and I'm humming at the same time I'm using this. Now also I'm kind of doing wah 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 with my jaw. Lightly though. It's not real obvious. It's not real strong but you want to practice you can growl or don't growl. Move this jaw wah 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 to get those sounds that I'm doing, I'm not really, I am using my tongue very lightly on those notes, but I'm really articulating with this. Ra, 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 ra. This is what I'm using. And then here you have a really fast, wide vibrato. It's not a trill. It's not like on the, you know, I mean, you might know this one. So you push the A down with the octave key and then these three fingers and the E flat key and you can do a lip show. Okay, and I go to the G. I'm just using the blues scale. G, F, D, D flat, C, you know, that. You want to practice your blues scales. You know, they're, they're in the Jamie Ambersall uh, blues, the red book. Just get the red book and practice, you know, all that stuff. But then you want to make something out of them. And, and the same thing with, like, Night Train. But Night Train is in the key of C, so you're in D. You know, you can play that in other keys, too. But you want to get into that uh, heavier articulation. Um... Uh, if if I start on the A, so you have your low notes, and I'm just barking them out. 
right? So, and this read's not really with it yet. If I had a little better read, it would be better. <laughs> So it's a combination now, and the faster, I was talking about that faster vibrato, that's an old blues trick, man. You land on a note, and you use a wider, faster vibrato. And then you honk out a couple of low notes. So anyway, so um, I don't want to make this video too long. You know, and I'm also ready for my next cup of coffee. <laughs> okay, look. So, um, you know, here's another thing. I'm going to do this really quick. This is only my opinion. This is, you know, of course, my opinion. Everybody has an opinion. This is my opinion. If you play, and, and you know, somebody did write me about playing the Barry sax. I don't play Barry anymore. I did. I played Barry for a long time. I played Barry bass clarinet. I did a lot of shows. I did a lot of that stuff. Uh, and I just don't do that anymore. I play tenor, soprano. I still play clarinet, which I played my whole life in flute. You know, but I don't play um, alto. Uh, in fact, I my alto's gone. Uh, one of my sons has it. And I, you know, and my uh, Barry I sold a long time ago. My bass clarinets are gone. Everything's gone. You know. Okay. Anyway, so here's the thing. Um, you don't need a really like, and you've heard me say this before, you don't need like a crazy baffle mouthpiece to make these sounds. You can just play using a regular um, mouthpiece. Um, and the thing is, you got to get a reed that vibrates though. And you got to blow into the horn, man, like you're going to blow the floor off. Okay? So, have a great Sunday. Bye.